Let me share something personal with you. My sense of direction is not great. So Google Maps and those kinds of apps are a real blessing to me. If you take me to a foreign city, spin me around three times, I don't know which way to go um, and I'll probably fall over too. So if you have that as well, um, then the Exam Reading Essentials Geolocation API is just what you're looking for. In this episode, we'll look at how to hook up that API to get those GPS coordinates inside your own app um, and how to use it. So there we go, another file new Xamarin Forms project, uh, which we're going to use to demonstrate the uh, use of geolocation. So before we get started, uh, make sure to check out like the GitHub for uh, Xamarin Essentials or the docs, uh, because you need to add some permissions to your uh, project. I think this API is supported well by at least Android, iOS, um, UWP, maybe some more. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but for Android, I already did this. So if we go to properties, Android manifest. Um, so you need to have the access course location, access find location. Um, actually, let me open this. Do that again, go here, right click and open with the source code editor. So you can see I've added all of these. This is in the docs, so go check that out. Um, and you want to just paste this in so you uh, will have all the right permissions to start using the GPS. Um, also, if you've not installed uh, Essentials before, you go want to check out uh, in Android at least the main activity um, when and make sure that this um, on the on request permissions result is in here and um, also that the essentials on request permissions result um, call is in here so that it will also do the right thing whenever um, you um, uh, do the runtime permissions, which is, I think, from Android Marshmallow and up or something. Um, so you need to have both ways configured to be compatible with all the right Android versions. Um, and for iOS, if we go to our iOS project, uh, make sure in your info P list that, um, you know, there's uh, XAML, um, uh, well, XML actually, uh, behind this as well. But uh, if you're using the GUI editor, make sure that you have the, the privacy one. And then for location, there's a couple of entries for location so make sure that you do the right one give them a descriptive um, um, description so users know why you want to use the location uh, make sure you have that set up so um, here we have our little project uh, file new nothing fancy um, so let me actually just uh, stop this right now of course essentials nuget package is already installed um, i'm just going to um, get rid of all of this i'm going to add a button here and text and have that say get location there we go and let's add a label here where we are going to add like the actual um, location in here so here we go result location uh, there we go and of course the most important thing our title um, geo location sample there we go um, now let's go to our code behind actually let me add a clicked event right here so new event handler um, and let's dive into that geolocator. It's not going to know this right now, but I will let the IntelliSense help uh, with that. So geolocation, oh, I had geolocator, okay. Um, so this is going to change it to geolocation and at the using uh, Xamarin Essentials at the top here. So geolocation, and this has actually only two methods. So get the last known location, which uh, gets it from some kind of cache. Uh, so that's something that you might want to use if you optimize things. Um, and, and you know, there might not be a last known location. So be aware of that. Um, and the get location, which will just go out to the GPS system and uh, get the location from there. So let's just use that one. Um, it's doing it async. So let's put this in a result and do an await. And then we need to make this um, async. There we go. So get the location async. And this has just, you know, um, do the do the location, nothing fancy. Uh, you have a couple of um, overloads with one having the um, geolocation request. So let's check out what that is. And a cancellation token so that you can cancel this um, GPS request at uh, any time you want. So let's check out this geolocation request. What does that do? Uh, that lets you specify the accuracy. So um, there is different levels of like the GPS accuracy that you um, can do. 
And I'm seeing, saying GPS, but I think the devices have their own combination of things like, um, you know, the network um, that they're attached to and those kinds of things uh, together with the GPS and some other things to determine, um, yeah, your precise location. Um, and we can specify the accuracy here. So you got a couple of levels, best, defil, uh, high, uh, lowest, medium. Um, so depending on what you're doing, um, you, you want to set this location. So the higher you set this basically, uh, the more battery it will uh, take. So uh, be aware of what you're trying to do here and um, uh, maybe let the, 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 the actual end user decide also like what the right level is um, um, by also uh, saving their, their battery level. So that's something that you need to take into account. Uh, let's just do it default for now. And uh, you can also here set a timeout like, okay, it's going to go out through the GPS or, or however it's going to get the location. And you can set a timeout here with like, time span from um, uh, minutes. Let's just do a timeout of one minute. If it can determine the location in one minute, then we're just going to timeout and it will probably throw some um, exception. Um, again, in the docs, there are a couple of different exceptions mentioned uh, that will happen in different scenarios. So um, go have a look at that and handle them appropriately. Uh, this video is going to be mostly about like how to use the, the core APIs and um, it's up to you to do something useful with it. Um, so this is going to happen on the button clicked and then actually do our result location, which is our label uh, dot text will have the result dot, well, it has a lot of things actually. So the result is a location object and that location has the actual accuracy that you actually got. So it might, um, um, oh, so this is actually the accuracy in meters, I see. Uh, so you can actually determine like how accurate is this thing to, to how many meters um, does this does this work? Uh, the altitude, so how high are we? Uh, the course, in which direction we're heading? Um, is it from a mock provider? So that's very useful whenever you want to determine like, hey, is this some kind of mock thing? Um, and of course, the latitude, longitude, um, you can do the speed, the timestamp, um, and some vertical accuracy as well. Uh, so there's a couple of methods in here too. Open Maps Async, so you can open the default maps um, application on the device um, and launch it with a couple of options to you know uh, get the directions to a certain location. And also um, calculate distance, so you can calculate the distance between uh, like two sets of uh, latitude and longitude and um, you can specify the unit so you can get that distance in meters, kilometers, uh, yards, but whatever. I don't know, you, what you can, whatever you can think of probably. Uh, but for now, we just want to, let's actually go back and we're going to use this uh, fancy string notation and we're going to say uh, long lat and this is going to be result dot uh, latitude and result dot longitude so let's just run this and see what that brings us so here we go here is our geolocation sample and whenever we click on get location um, it gets us this uh, these coordinates. So the thing is, of course, whenever we run this on a emulator, uh, then the question is, where does this come from? Uh, so I think on the iOS simulator, there is also a way to um, in the in the menu somewhere to set a certain GPS location or even simulate a route. Uh, but here on this Android simulator, um, you can go here to these three dots here for the menu. And whenever we click that, we get a new window um, and it already opens on the location one. So the current location is set to um, right here, which looks like the um, Microsoft campus. Um, and I can set that to whatever. So if I set that closer to home, so to Amsterdam, um, I do that and um, I can set the point or I can just set the location. So with this, I set it. And then whenever I do this again, you can see that the coordinates change and this should be the coordinates of this coordinate in Amsterdam. So um, that is pretty cool. Um, so that's the way how you can, can you know, test these uh, kinds of things uh, based on location. But if we want to take it a little bit further than that and um, just monitor like the, the GPS continuously. So uh, we're going to close this one and maybe you want to say, okay, uh, we add another button. Let's see, um, there we go. Um, stop getting location 
and I named this button one clicked. There we go. Does it generate that for me? Very cool. And I have this uh, variable right here. Let's just make it a Boolean is getting location. Uh, there we go. And we set this here to uh, true. And we say while is getting location, we're going to request the uh, new location. Uh, maybe you want to not do that like very, very fast. So let's add a delay of one second. And maybe you want to um, add this to our text so we can see them all scrolling by. And we're going to add a little environment uh, new line here. So each one of them will um, show up in, in a new line. And then for our uh, stop getting location, we're just going to set this to false. There we go. Uh, so now when I set this, I run this again. And we should be getting like the multiple locations. Well, uh, whenever we stand still, uh, we will just get the same location over and over again. So whenever I click this, it starts getting the location uh, each second. So there we go. Um, and uh, let's let's actually stop this. So this should stop it uh, because this is going to be the same location over and over again. And I don't have any scroll view in uh, in here, so I won't be able to see it once it gets past the bottom here. Uh, but let's open this window again. And here at the top, you will also see like the routes. So we can also do um, routes. And right now we're we're set in Amsterdam, but I've already created this safe safe route. Um, and I can just replay that. So it will replay it from here to A to B. And I can do that with, um, you know, from a bike or a car or uh, just walking. And I can also set the playback speed. So let's set this to five and I can say, okay, play this route for me. So you can see here in this maps view, I can zoom in a little bit and you can see it moving. There we go. We are driving from the Microsoft campus. Um, and you can see the, the location here also at the at the bottom um, changing. Uh, but this should also change in our app. So if I do get location now, you can see it's different each time. And um, this way we can simulate like, you know, we're driving around or we're walking around and um, we can do something with um, those locations uh, this way. Now, as already mentioned, uh, be sure to check out the documentation because GPS is one of those things um, that you really have to uh, get the permissions right. So have a look at how the permissions are handled. Also catch the right exceptions because depending on if the user didn't give any permission or uh, maybe a GPS device or a location pinpointing device is not on the device that you're uh, running the app on. So make sure you get all these things right. Uh, but if you do, then you now have a really powerful tool to um, make your users aware of their surroundings and do all kinds of cool things with the location. If this is uh, a video that you liked, please click that like button. Um, if you really liked multiple of my videos, hit that subscribe button. Or if you just like this one very, very much, also subscribe. Um, and if you want to see any other APIs first, please let me know in the comments. I'm going over uh, all the essentials APIs. I'm going through Xamarin Forms. I'm going through the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And um, I'm also planning to do some other stuff outside of that. So please let me know what you want to see. And I'll be glad to see you for the next episode.